We're driving over the uh, Dartford Bridge, looking down at the oil jetties where three years ago, four years ago, I would have been working. Now I work for Ridge Monkey. I wonder if they'll take me back. <laughs> so I tried to find a little bit out about this lake and it really is the unknown. The only thing I found out from a guy that's a ski instructor in the Alps, he told me that this was the lake that the local anglers avoided because it's the hard one basically. Out of the few lakes that run through the valley where we're going, this one is the one no one really knows how big the fish are in there. There's definitely big carp, but there isn't a lot of them. It sounds like it's going to be tough and it's going to be enjoyable, a real challenge. So this is what I've wanted all along. So I'm going to get there, hopefully beautiful scenery. I can't see it not being middle of the French Alps. Probably the most excited I've been for one of these trips. Well, we're just about to come off the ferry. We're just getting into France now. So we're going to make our way to Holland next to go and pick up the boats before we stay in a hotel tonight and then get off in the morning to the Alps. So we're off to Raptor now to pick up the boats and the engines and everything. Then we'll stay somewhere, maybe Lyon or Dijon or something like that. And then tomorrow, plough through and get to the lake where we've got a challenge. And apparently it's not an eating challenge. So look forward to that because we are a bit fed up with the eating challenges. We're in the middle of Holland. Uh, we've come to see our good friends at Raptor. They're able to lend us a few boats. We've had a real nightmare with this trip. Um, we're fishing a massive, great big lake. We need boats, are absolutely essential. But because of COVID, we've had a nightmare getting yeah. the boats delivered to us. So we've made the trip over. We've come to see them at their establishments. We're going to deflate the boats and try and squeeze them in the van. It should be a good one. <laughs> yeah, I ain't got a lot of room in my van. Have you, Joan? No, they're going with you, I think, Jay. Well, I they're going on the roof then, because at the moment, <laughs> none of us are prepared for this. <laughs> Should we get this packed down and get going? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, yeah. sounds good. Done. Okay, Brum, I am, oh. I'm not very experienced in a boat. The other lads have done a bit. These boats are extra safe, aren't they? Yes, rough uh, material, thick material. You cannot see it here, but on the bottom, there's thick protection covering the most essential areas of the boat. If one section gets punctured, the boat doesn't go down. No, it's... no, no. So, uh, the bigger boats have three chambers, so if this one goes down, the other two stay inflated. Yeah. And then you still have the floor, in case of an air deck, which stays also inflated. I like the camouflage one, but I've got a feeling I'm going to have to fight James for it. And uh, <laughs> okay. obviously keep a life jacket on, they're well safe, yep. and I'm looking forward to using them. So thanks for lending yeah. us to them, mate. Brilliant, thank Hope you. Hope you have a good trip. Yeah, brilliant, we'll thank let you, you know. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> Bye. Well, we're pretty much loaded up. Got a couple of outboards here, and then we'll be making our way to the hotel. We just nipped in Raptor, got all the bits and bobs. We're trying to stick everything in Dave's van because he's got very little kit, it looks like. <laughs> he's done such a good job of packing that we end up just filling it full of crap. It's his fault for packing it so well. He's only got himself to blame. <laughs> well, this is not ideal. We've picked up the boats, and we're en route to France. We're. Uh, we're stopping in Reims tonight and uh, Big j -Bo has broken down. I don't really know cars or vans too well. But Is it that, the lake that he drove through maybe? <laughs> it was a pond. <laughs> Trying to sort it out. My van is not working. Absolute nightmare. Starter motor's gone. Um, yeah, so me and Maxi Boy are going to have to go and stay in a hotel tonight and uh, that's going to get fixed in the morning, hopefully. Uh, worst case, tomorrow afternoon. And then we'll crack on and smash ourselves all the way to the lake tomorrow. Could be worse. We've just got to get on with it, make the best of it and get to the lake ASAP. Nice early start this morning. Unfortunately, without Jay, Jay's had to stay about two hours behind us. As you've probably seen, his vehicle broke down. Well, I'm not getting my hopes up too high, but we're at Mercedes, it's 2 p.m. I've got eight hours driving and the blokes just said the van's fixed. I'm very excited, but there's no van here. So next, next update will be me flying down the motorway trying to catch the boys up. Can't wait. <laughs> 
she's fixed. 24 hours later, it's all done. Worst night in the hotel ever. Him in the bunk bed, snoring his head off. No way, mate. You were snoring like a walrus last night. <laughs> really? <laughs> Do I look like I snore? Well, anyway, Van Gate, Bart 3, eight hours driving. I'm going to catch the boys up. Let's go. So we're on the road now. We're about probably three hours away from the French Alps. And uh, yeah, feeling tired, but feeling excited about this lake. I've got a good feeling it's going to be a real adventure, this one. Well, we are finally at the lake. We are located near Lamure in France. And as you can see in the background, we have got the Alps behind. What an absolutely breathtaking venue, surrounded by mountains that go up into the clouds, long rows of ferns, tree-lined banks, absolutely beautiful. And what tops it all off? Gene clear water and carp. We've heard this venue is quite tricky, and boy, am I looking forward to this. But first things first, we're going to get to know it, get out in the boats, have a scout about, and hopefully we'll learn some spots for the trip. So for now, we're going to go and do that, and I am, for one, very, very excited. We're waiting for Jay, who's broken down about 129 times on the way here. Uh, and I'm hoping he's going to get here soon, because Dave and I are both gagging to get fish in. So instead, I might just sit here and enjoy the sun for the minute. Well excited. <laughs> We're on our way, following the boss. Be there in an hour. Fingers crossed they've left me with a decent swim. But there's plenty of water to go out, plenty of big carp to go out. We don't really know the extent of the stock, so to catch a 40 pounder would be amazing. Um, common or mirror, I'm not bothered, but a big common would be fantastic with a backdrop of the Alps behind. So yeah, I'm going to keep that in the mind, 40 pound common, and see what happens. Next time you see me, I'll hopefully be in my bivvy, all set up, ready to get the rods out. I am finally here, it's taken me a good few days to get here. Had some vehicle troubles, which was an absolute nightmare that's probably documented. But now I'm here, what an absolutely stunning lake. 250 acres in the mountains, We've got huge mountains to the right, big mountain to the left. You've got snow capped ones in the distance, stunning place. And I cannot wait to get a rod out. It is beautiful. Everything a carp angler would ever want is here. I decided to get up pretty early this morning. Uh, while it's nice and calm, we haven't got the rods out or anything yet, but while it's nice and calm, I thought it'd give me an opportunity to get out there and actually see the spots through the aquascope. Just as I was drifting towards the deeper poles in nines and tens, they started fizzing up like mad. But for now, I'm gonna have a scout around the lake while it's nice and quiet. Just learn it a bit more, really. I'm gonna go and have a look.
yesterday was all about getting set up. We got the boats blown up, bivvies up. Last night, by the time we finished, it was just get some food down our necks and get some sleep. So what we're gonna do, the poles we dropped out yesterday evening, James popped out in a boat and he said there was fish fizzing. So we decided not to put the rods out yet and spook them off the area. But we'll let them finish what they're doing. But I tell you what, I'm dead excited to get these rods out. Okay, so I've probably spent the last few hours out on the lake on the boat looking for new areas. After using a prodding stick, I found there was a lot of onion weed on what I thought was quite clear, but it wasn't. There's a lot of soft sand. So I'm just coming up to the uh, marker poles now uh, that I've put in a bit earlier on. The reason I've put them where I've put them is there's loads of uh, low-lying onion weed. And where this is, is the onion weed just stops and then it's beautiful sand. Yeah, so I found a lovely flat area around 16 foot. When I dropped the marker down, it went down from right donk, so I know it's a nice hard bottom, same firm, much better for getting a bite off. And this morning I saw a lot of fish out long, so I've got a lot of confidence there. Today is going to be going in with not tons and tons of bait. I'm going to put quite accurately, drop the rig, uh, I've got a nice big 10 ounce lead. I'm fishing at about 250 yards, I reckon. And I'm just going to put a couple of scoops of bait over the top, nice and accurate. Loads of crayfish in the lake. So I've got a fish to keep the bait in the area. Crayfish ain't fans of hemp, maize or tiger nuts. So it's a good route to go down if you want to avoid them. And if I'm going to put boilie in, I completely crumb it up so they can't walk off with the baits. So it's a real mixture of food there and hopefully it's going to bring me a fish. Tonight might bring a bite for one of us, um, but the lake's absolutely huge. We don't really know the stock. We don't know what's been coming out. So it is a case of suck it and see really. Just going into first night and uh, we'd all said our good nights and wished each other good luck. And uh, this one is just pulled up tight. It's not doing a lot, but they don't at 300 yards. So, But it's coming in and we're playing it from the bank, which is, I didn't think we was going to be able to, but this one just seems to be coming in uh, really, really easy. Maybe too easy. It might not even be a carp. Nice little bit of flame on there, isn't it? Come on, baby. Come on, baby. One more flick of the head. Yes. Yes, mate. Come on, Joe. Yes. So, there, I've carp in this lake. <laughs> well, look at this bad boy. 25 pound French Alps mirror carp. After an absolute epic journey to get here, Really, really happy to get this one. Fishing at roughly 250 yards. It didn't put much fight out when it was out there. They just caught on a tight line. But a few bleeps, pulled up tight, and I'm into this one. Absolutely stunning. Little scales around its wrist. Yeah, beautiful carp. And a great start to the great escape. When we got here, it felt daunting, this lake. It's over 250 acres, relatively unknown. And, you know, a few of us were a bit anxious about it. But 
this morning my right hand rod ripped off and I've got a mega old 39 pound mirror waiting for its picture to be taken. It's a real wrinkly old battle axe. Just amazing, amazing carp in truly breathtaking scenery. So you see me now getting that right hand rod back on the spot and it was the spot that when I put out yesterday, when you crack down, you, you kind of say to yourself, that's a bite. And lo and behold, it was. Well, how about that for a first carp? Over 38 pounds of beasty, wrinkly old mirror carp in some of the most breathtaking scenery I think I've ever fished. What a start. Fought like an absolute tiger and I am absolutely delighted. Myself, they call me J-O, A to the easy E yeah. huh. Know that we undefeated, y'all are beneath them speeds Let's find the air agreement, but his lines are overhead Better check the air for clearance, call the tower This is our clear to heat the air We're meeting James off the mark Dave's getting busy, playing around in the boat And I've even managed to nick another one There you go, what a beautiful carp Stunning, pin perfect in every way And uh, when this is 50 pound the anglers are going to flock to this place. We're fishing a lake that's got loads and loads of crayfish in it. So I've chose to fish a fluorocarbon D-rig. Slight twist, a friend of mine, Gav Barrett, showed me how he ties his and he doesn't use a whipping knot. He puts a bit of shrink tube down the shank of the hook. And you know what? It makes life so much easier. And I'm all about tying rigs quickly and making them as easy as possible. And that for me is bang on. A little bit of shrink tube right the way down the shank, cut it off at where the uh, barb of the hook is, thread the line back through just like a normal D-rig and blob it off. And you have loads and loads of movement, just like a normal Fleur D-rig. In fact, I think this one gives you a little bit more movement. So thanks Gav. I appreciate the uh, message and I appreciate the rig clinic that you give me. I'm quite happy with that one. Works perfectly. I've tied it up at about nine inches long. Uh, that gives me loads of room. When it falls down through the water, it booms away perfectly. I've used a fairly big loop on the end. That's so it's doubled up. And when I put that onto the leg clip, it gives me a little bit more kick away, even though I've got a long anti-tangle sleeve on there. I don't need any uh, putty or anything like that because there's a load of crayfish in there. you notice that I've got a rubber anti-tangle sleeve and not a tungsten because the crays absolutely love anything tungsten related. So no putty, no tungsten. Bit of shrink tube on the hook, very, very simple. And bait wise, I've got three tiger nuts flossed on. I do use a hair stop because there's craze in there. I do it slightly different to the norm. I come up, I come back down, put the hair stop on, and then I blob it right at the base. This just gives it so much more security. I know that the crayfish can't pick the hair out, and I know that they're definitely not going to be able to pull floss all the way through all three tiger nuts. That's never going to happen. I've never had a crayfish take this off a hook. So for me, total confidence, I can leave the bait out there for two or three days if I want, knowing that this is fishing effectively. Yes, finally it was my turn and my rod was bent over and it was time to meet my first Alps carp. Come on, Joe. That's him. Yes! yes. <laughs> Cheers, yes. Get him. Proper row that, wasn't it? Absolute belt intake, stripping lines off of me. My heart was absolutely banging, I'm telling you. Three nights we've been here, coming into our third night. I was beginning to think it weren't going to happen. And uh, we're all off the mark, so yes. Well, look at that for an incredible French Alps carp. Not the kind of fish I was expecting to catch in France. More like saying I'd find in Oxford but I am not complaining. Fought really hard, lovely plate scales all over her, and my heart was in my mouth. Magnificent creature. So with my first carp under my belt, it wasn't long till I was back in action again. We was told that five fish between the three of us in a long session would be a result. And just 48 hours in, we've now had five fish, so 
we feel we're unlocking it a little bit. And although this is a small carp, it's all part of the jigsaw. I'm gonna get him back, try and get the rod back out in the dark. The week is still young. Well, laying here listening to the wind battering against the bivvy. Good old sturdy bivvy isn't moving anywhere. Recently I've just been out in the middle of the lake with James to get his rods out. Unfortunately the prop on the boat wiped his uh, rod out on the way back. So he's now fishing one rod. It definitely is calmer in the mornings and because it's night bites I think you're better off going out in the mornings putting your rods out then just doing baiting later on so you know you're placing your rods better. We're in the French Alps, we're 2,000 feet above sea level and the weather changes very quick. I'm just going to talk to you about my baiting approach for this session. It was based basically on the amount of crayfish that are in the lake. There's absolutely millions of the things. So I brought boily, but the idea was to crush it. If you crush boily, the crayfish can't pick it up and walk off with it. The dust sits around the bottom and it keeps your bait in the area. Now, if you ain't seen a crayfish, they're mean looking little things. Apparently they taste lovely. Uh, so I'm using quite hard baits. I'm using a very sort of dominant mix of tiger nuts, which are obviously rock hard and the crayfish find them very, very hard to get through. They help deter the bream, although the bream do take them, they do prefer pellets and that sort of thing. So that's why I'm using the tigers. I've also got some hemp in there as well. Uh, the main reason for the hemp is that it will keep the crayfish grubbing around. All those tiny, tiny little food particles will be a real effort for the crayfish. So I'm hoping that the hemp will keep them occupied. One of the fish um, was excreting uh, crayfish. So I've actually decided to add boilies into the mix because I want the crayfish to get on the spot. And as long as I'm fishing with a rig and a bait on the hair that doesn't uh, get affected by the crayfish, then I'm going for them to come out there. And it's proven it because I've, as soon as I've added the boilies in and some liquids and just more of a smelly bait, um, I've had fish. So what I've been doing, I've been mixing boilies, crushing them up, adding hemp, pellet and tiger nut which sort of comes out like this. So I've got lots of little bits across the bottom which stops the crayfish walking off with any of the bigger items. Now I'm not going to give you the gory details of how I'm getting 50 or 60 crayfish crushed into this bucket, but let's just say it's a bit of a horror movie and uh, it's definitely working. So I'm fishing with a little bit of hemp, a little bit of maize and a little bit of buckwheat and then uh, the S7 boily in various different ways. So I've got it crushed, I've got it in halves, I've got it in full, which has got a bit of liquid that I've been glugging up for quite a while. And then I've also got some Himalayan rock salt, that a little spoonful of that goes in. You know, it makes the mix perfect in my opinion, especially when you add a bit of liquid over the top, it just absorbs it and it gets into all of the bait that way. The tigers I'm using, they're not straight out of the jar off the shelf. They are perfectly fresh. I've got Amwell baits to do me a load up. The hemp is totally fresh as well, so only the highest quality out there. Just keep on giving it a mix. That's triple X that's gone in there. So there you have it, a very, very bitty mix that the crayfish will find very hard to deal with. And also some wholesome hard baits in the tiger nuts that will help deter the bream and of course the crayfish. It's perfect, you know, and, and the proof's in the pudding. Whatever I'm doing, I'm doing right because I'm having pretty much a fish a night. With the change in weather conditions, the low pressure moved them fish into the deeper water and I really did make hay while the sun wasn't shining with a couple of fish one after another. Well, this is the first of two takes this morning. This one was just 17 pound. Only small, but they're all welcome. And funny enough, since I've come off the D-Rig and gone back to my old faithful blowback rig, a single nut topped with a bit of yellow corn, I've been getting more bites. I'm hoping now, just going through the numbers, that a bigger one's gonna come along. We'll check out that little breeze block. Just under 20 pounds, and was actually the second take in the morning. 
We've not had any commons yet so far. I think we've had nine small mirrors and one half decent mirror. Somewhere out there in 300 acres, there's got to be a big fish. Like we said, we know nothing about this place other than in the past it has actually done 50 pounders. I think a 40 pounder would be a massive result on this trip. So I'm just going to keep going and see if we can come across one. Okay, I'm going to talk you through the rig I'm using at this venue. It's a 20 pound fluorocarbon hook link to a size four curve hook. As bait, I've got tiger nuts. Let me tell you why I'm using this rig. This venue is infested with crayfish and this 20 pound boom section, no matter how much they walk across it and play with the bait, will always kick back to its original position. And the D-rig allows the hook to drop, give me a nice deep hook hold. Tiger nuts, because crayfish don't really like tiger nuts. They'll have a little play with them and just walk off. If I was to try fish boilies on this venue, it's likely I'd have no bait on within the hour. So that's making sure I'm fishing all the time. You may notice this lead clip. We've put this through a lot of rigorous tests in the last year. We've dropped it from bait boats, rowing boats, cast it long range. We're still tweaking a few things, but we're really excited about this. So there you are, I'm gonna get this rig back out in the lake. Well, after two nights with virtually a rod in the water, I'm delighted to say that I caught two this morning. What's more, the plan's starting to come together. I've actually changed two of my rods, gone a little bit longer, having seen fish show in there each morning and I've had two bites on the same rod. So very, very happy with the plan and I'm gonna to continue to do it for the coming days. I'm gonna get this one back, jump in the boat because it looks like there's a chance of a daytime bite today. You can hear the braid rubbing through the eyes. We're using braid here, zero stretch in it, fishing at two, 250, 300 yards. And the braid gives you an, not only an instant indication because it's got no stretch, but it's very tough to any of the zebra mussels and snags that this lake's got. So the braid is helping to uh, be very abrasive against them sharp features. Get me a net. Go on. Yes. That's a nice one, mate. That. Cheers, man. Oh, mate. Yes. Finally, I've got one over fifteen pound. <laughs> Here we go. Just under forty-one pound. <laughs> well, we come here hoping of an Alps forty, and there's now one in the sling. We've still got time left, and I've got a feeling this might not be the only one buzzing. It was lovely seeing that old one that James had at the start of the week. We've got another proper dinosaur of a carp here that just leaves Jay, and I've got a feeling he's gonna do it. Well, look at that old relic of a carp. It's probably spent the last, I don't know, 30, 40 years, every winter, swimming under feet of ice, a proper hardened creature, and what we come here for. I can't tell you how pleased I am. Really, really chuffed. And I love kissing them as well. <laughs> well, as I said before, old as the eels that it lives in. A proper mountain carp, and one I'm so pleased to catch. Caught a few small ones this week, and I knew if I just kept going, working through the numbers, something special was gonna turn up and it has. What an absolute gorgeous pair of French Alps carp. Not the biggest fish in the lake by a long shot, but totally different, beautiful characters, and they fight like stink, don't they? They have proper, proper fight in here, it's unbelievable. They do, mate. I mean, it doesn't really matter the size, does it? We're fishing 300 acres of water, proper raw carp in, a bite's a bite, isn't it? Exactly, mate. They look like they want to kiss, look. Oh. <laughs> Good man. Well, we better get them back, haven't we? Get them back. We've uh, got a big day today. We have. Usually when we're given a black envelope, it involves us doing a challenge for the first choice of swim. Unfortunately, due to the uh, error of me getting here late, 
it's not that, but we've still got to do it. At this time round, it's going to be a forfeit for the loser. Uh, okay, there's always something in there, <laughs> always. Could just let us have fun. So anyway, let's have a little look, see what we've got to do. High and not dry. Oh. Okay. okay. That's weird. You'll be taken for some safety lessons. Each of you need to be ready for some insane adrenaline rush activities. Right. <laughs> White water rafting at its hardest, highest and fastest route in the Alps. <laughs> right, yo. <laughs> oh, brilliant. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Each of you will need to man a raft and as usual, the quickest wins loser of this challenge has a pre-planned forfeit just because they can. Okay. <laughs> Get training, hashtag sicko. <laughs> Get training. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my right. God. Well, that's going to be interesting. I've got a feeling that I'm going to be faster than you. I've got a feeling I'm going to need a big boat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to go and train in one of these boats, so I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, okay, so yeah. I suppose we better get ready for it. Let's get it on, mate. <laughs> Well, we're finally halfway up the Alps and it looks like we are going rafting. What do we think, fellas? I am nervous, I've got to be honest. I think if we was all in one of these big ones, I wouldn't be too bad. No. But getting in one of them little tiny shoe canoes, it's going to be a squeeze for me. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few rocks out there, isn't there, mate? Well, mate, I can tell you now, I'm not going to be doing this forfeit. Oh, a confident man. I tell you, I actually looked at it and it weren't as scary as I thought. So okay. all I've got to do now is beat you two pair of clowns down. Okay, we'll see, mate. I'm going to keep brave. quiet. It's brave, isn't it? Yeah, right. it's brave, yeah, mate, isn't it? Mate. So we've arrived. The challenge is on. I'm actually nervous. I'm never nervous about stuff like this, but I don't know how this is going to go. You know, looking forward to it in an anxious, scared kind of way. Are you scared, James? Nah, I like this sort of thing, mate. You liar! Literally, the minute that goes on record, he goes, oh, I'm now Hollywood and I'm not scared of anything. The minute that gets turned off, he's grappling himself, he's going to run into a rock. Listen, Mungo, I reckon I'm beating you. Yes, you are. Hollywood, I'm definitely beating you. We'll see, It's mate. on. We'll see. It's on. We'll see, boy. <laughs> You'll be eating that turkey's <laughs> or whatever Thanks. it's going to be. <laughs> well, if they call this safety training, the real thing was really going to put us through our paces. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's do it. It's good. With the fun and games over in a raft, it was time for a short safety meeting where I just about fitted in the canoe, but it was then on to the proper challenge. Get on his boat! 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 Get
After seeing poor old J-Boy scrambling in the river like a human bison, we were down to two. The General is a tough cookie, and having heard so many old stories, I was led to believe that he'd skippered battleships in the Navy, so he definitely knew how to handle a boat. However, it was my first non-eating challenge, and so I had to come away victorious. So I've sat in the van after uh, the challenge and um, I've had to reevaluate my life. I have, uh, I've had a new coming because I felt genuinely that I was going to die in that river. <laughs> yeah, I've decided that this is like my second coming, I'm going to change a few things. Mainly I'm going to drink more beer. That is the plan. Um, 2020 has been shit and uh, I nearly died in the river. So now the plan is to drink more beer. Game on. I've already started. Okay, the challenge is over. James won. He came in about a foot in front of me. <laughs> Jay, we had to revive, we had to give him compressions, <laughs> the lot, basically nearly drowned. They gave him a toothpick as a canoe. <laughs> but uh, it was a great laugh and I can't wait to see what the forfeit is for Jay this week. Yeah, I can't wait. I genuinely, I've never been this scared in my life. They might as well give me a unicorn lilo to go down that river in. Um, it was an absolute joke. I mean, I know I'm a big lad, but it's like, you know when you see the fat bloke getting on the uh, lilo, in the swimming pool, and as you sit on it, the lilo just goes, Gee, see you later. <laughs> That's exactly what happened to me in this river. And I was not happy about it at all. No. I'll give it one more go, and then I thought, I'd actually don't really fancy dying, so I'm going to get out. So I pulled out halfway through and uh, let the boys crack on, and I've got a full fit tomorrow. Say love, it is what it is. Right, Jay, we thought as you'd been on your feet for most of the time, you'll have achy little feet. We're going to give you a foot spa. Oh, I know exactly No, no, what's no, coming. no, no, no. This reminds me when I went to China. Yeah, left foot first, mate. <laughs> Are you having a laugh? You're not putting them in there. No <laughs> way. <laughs> no <laughs> way. No way. No way. Keep them there. <laughs> oh, you little <laughs> f up! F <laughs> mate! Oh. <laughs> you can remember oh, when they God! <laughs> they are all dead. <laughs> oh. God, they're so getting crushed and put in my bag. <laughs> oh. Especially that one. Oh. Yeah, mate. <laughs> Oh, look at the trouble with <laughs> myself because you've kicked it! Go on, Go on, Chad! Go on, Chad! This one's a knobhead! <laughs> That's got to be done! Look at that! Red man! Red man! Red man! Red man! Red man! Red man! <laughs> Don't so make him squash it! One, go! Well done, Jay boy! Well done, Jay boy! Well done, Jay boy! Well done, The day dawned beautiful and sunny, flat as a mill pond, and the morning bird song was soon interrupted by a take on the right hand rod. Another incredible Alps mirror was soon in the net. Well, it's been a very busy night in more ways than one. I've had a bream at midnight, followed by another bream, then cut off on the gravel bar. So when this one ramped off just after first light, I decided to hop in the boat, get above it 
and this is the result. A solid boxy looking mirror carp and a very happy angler. Let's hope there'll be a few more to come, maybe a bigger one. So the following morning, I was off the mark again. A lovely scaly Alps carp. She came in the early hours of this morning. Lost a fish just after this. I think I'm gonna to have to up the gauge on the hooks. Real rough terrain out there, a lot of weed and snags. So a little tactical change on the rig end later, but uh, for now, really pleased with this one. Beautiful carp, 24 pounds. Things are going really well. How about that for an ancient Alps carp? Amazing to think that this old warrior is swimming under the ice in the winter. Absolute brute. Battle scars all over him and a few stories to tell, I'm sure. This is what we came for. Delighted with this one. We've had a string of small fish, which was getting a little bit frustrating, but wise words from Mr. Levy this morning, keep on going, was very wise indeed. And this is the result mental boat battle you could tell it was a good one is it really stayed deep this one and i am delighted as you can imagine made my trip For many, this might look quite a barbaric rig and a little bit cumbersome, but there is a reason for that. In this lake, there are loads of nuisance species, and by nuisance species, I mean crayfish and bream. They're an absolute nightmare. So I'm using a rig that's gonna help deter them and obviously stay in position, ready for the carp to come into the swim. The rig is known as the cluster rig, or the ring of tigers to many, and there's a presentation that was shown to me by my good friend Tom, he fishes a lot abroad and has fished these big sort of barrages and public lakes a lot. So it was a rig that he recommended, like I said, to stop the bream and the crayfish. You'll notice that I've actually got four tiger nuts on there with a couple of bits of cork that will just balance it nicely and will allow it just to waft and sit off the hook. Just a balanced presentation, a bit like a wafter, I guess. Now, to tie the presentation, I use 15 pounds RM Tech fluorocarbon. This is nice and stiff and will kick away from the lead as I lower it onto the spot. Um, I've got no putty, no braid or anything like that on there. Crayfish absolutely love to play with the putty, take all the fibres out of the braid and you're just asking for trouble to be honest on crayfish infested waters. So I keep it nice and simple with the hook links. Obviously it's nice and invisible as well on the bottom. On the hook end I've got a size 4 medium curved shank hook, very very strong, very aggressive and the carp find it particularly hard to deal with. To make things very easy as well I've got a rotator swivel underneath that shrink tubing. Should I get a fish, should I catch a bream unfortunately or something like that, I can literally snip the shrink tubing away and change my hook really really quickly. So like I said it's a presentation I've been using on this session, it's working really well so far and I'm going to be using it for the duration. Hey! <laughs> 
Hey! Oi, oi! <laughs> you all right, Dan? How's it going? Yeah, I genuinely have loved uh, just keeping up to date with what all you lads have been doing on social media. It's been wicked, <laughs> like you lads climbing the mountains, being at the beaches, it looks like a proper scream and I'm gutted I've missed it. Oh, mate, <laughs> you've missed an amazing one. Uh, do you know what, as well, it looks, uh, the fish that you lads have put up look mega. Mate, like old yeah, it's are. like there's a few small fish, and then you have to work for about eight or ten fish, then and you then you then one. you get given a jewel, and it's like the most amazing carp you'll ever catch. But the lake is phenomenal, mate. It's been hard work, but really rewarding. Yeah. The thing is, with hard work you get effort, and when you're like ploughing through lots, lots of smaller fish, you're sort of unlocking the code. And when one of them real gems turn up, it fucking makes yeah. it all worthwhile for yeah. everyone. Yeah, it's worth all, it. All, all, all the effort, Jay breaking down, like oh, everything. That, uh, We've found something out. Jay sinks <laughs> to the bottom. Uh, I, I, can't, I can't wait to see the challenge. I cannot wait to watch that. James, turns out, is a professional f***ing surfer. <laughs> turns out that James is a professional bream and catfish angler. How dare you? He also played a four pound bream and got the whole camera crew up and told him it was a hundred pound cat. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't lying either. <laughs> Daddy boy, we've got to go mate, we've got to crack on, we've got to get our rods out. Um, no worries, good boy. to hear from your brother. Uh, best of luck for you boys tonight and safe journeys home and just keep doing what you're doing, you're smashing it. Tight lines tonight yeah, mate. Take care Dan. See you later mate. See you in the next no, one mate. Bye, mate. Bye mate, bye mate. A fearsome storm hit the camp, and as the wind sent waves crashing into the bank, I had another bite. As I surged through the white caps in my trusty boat, it was battle on. The rod was hooped over double, the line was singing in the wind, and whatever was attached was holding really deep. This was another big carp. Oh, come on. Come on now. It's absolutely beasting me, this carp. <clears throat> Or a little flash of a dark back. There's commons in this lake, I reckon this is a common. Right, it's fighting. <laughs> Big, long, powerful common. I, don't, I just don't get how it, how it can still go. It ain't a monster, but it's a lovely old one. Come on, mate. I'm oh, stuck under the orc. Yes! <sighs> Knackered. <laughs> That'll do, another original. Well, <laughs> what a glorious, glorious old carp that is. Look how gold it is. They put up an unbelievable fight out in open water, probably due to the fact that the lead hadn't ejected, the only one that hasn't all week. <laughs> so he used that to his advantage, that's for sure. But look at him, withered old fins. <sighs> Doesn't get a lot better, does it? He deserves one, doesn't he? There you go, sunshine. Certainly going well this one. Very, very hard to tell whether they're uh, whether they're one of the big ones or not. Because at such range you're just pumping and winding. <laughs> Looks like a nice old one by Mr. Levy's just said. Which is what we want. Yeah, it's a nice fish. Big black eye on it. Oh yeah, he really he'll do. Come on fella. Oh, he's got a nice fat belly. Short, fat one. Come on, big boy. Come on, mate. 
big black eye. Come on, come on. They've had one with a big black eye in the week. Come on, fella. Come on. Yes, he's a lovely one. <laughs> well, quite unbelievably, this one has got a huge black eye and Dave's at the beginning of the week also had a huge black eye kind of hoping it's not or kind of hoping it is because it was a 40 it'd be absolutely amazing if uh, if I'd caught the same one surely it can't be it might just be the strain but you never know we'll uh, we'll get it out and have a look look at this wrinkly old dinosaur we have a strange feeling that this is the same fish that Dave had earlier in the week, which shows that maybe there aren't actually that many carp in here, or he's a very hungry boy. Quite unbelievable, really. I'm very happy with that all the same. Proper old ice dinosaur. Big black eye on him. Few scars as well. Love it. After releasing the prehistoric looking mirror back to its watery home, the action just got better and better, with multiple takes coming on all the rods. After feeling heavy resistance on this particular occasion, from the get-go, I donned the life jacket and hopped straight into the boat. Soon enough, I was near to the hook fish, and after another spirited scrap on the calm waters, I netted yet another wonderful looking carp. Any chance you can share them rare ones with all of us? You don't, you don't sound too guilty. So Dave was taking the rod off of uh, James to put onto the uh, rest. It's just the way we've been doing it, you know, bringing the rod, pass it over to one of us, just an easier way of doing it. And um, it went off in Dave's hand. So he's had the right result, really. He just stayed in the boat, passed the rod back and went back out. <laughs> a bit of a brute, this one, quite unbelievably. I just dropped the rod out. Oh, she's angry. And I was just passing. Oi, calm down. I was just passing Dave the rod, and he looked at me and said, "You've got one on here." To which I replied, "You're having a laugh, Dave." And he said, "No, mate. Look." And it was just stripping line off the spool. So straight back into the boat, and oh, this angry, angry mirror is the result. Oh, whoa, 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 calm down. I'm going to put this one back because. Uh, She's getting very, very angry. <laughs> it's, it's going crazy today. I wonder whether the storm last night, we had a bit of, a, bit of an electrical storm going on on the mountains last night, and I'm wondering whether that sort of change in pressure has, uh, has, has made the fishing go pretty, pretty mad on here, really. On this side anyway, it's, it just seems to be going potty today, which is rather nice. He's a 40. Oh, yes. <laughs> That'll do, boys. All that hard work has finally paid off. Been wading through fish, and eventually a whacker turns up. What a carp. That'll do, boys, wouldn't it? So, so happy with that. With James catching that absolute dinosaur, I couldn't wait to get my rods out for the last night. Putting them on the spot, pinpoint perfect, making sure the bait, rigs, everything was spot on. I knew it would do a big one. I had a gut feeling all week that I was going to catch one, and I finally did. Yes! 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 Buzz it! Yeah. Well done, John. 
over the moon with that. Well, that's how you finish a great escape. 42 pound common out the Alps. What an absolute stunner. <laughs> <laughs> well done, mate. We come here to catch a few fish. We didn't have any expectations. We all wanted a 40 pounder and uh, we managed it. Yeah, before this trip, we wanted 140 out the Alps. Yeah. And we've all caught 40 pounders. We Absolutely have. amazing. It surpassed our expectations, really, Massive, isn't it? Definitely. What a place. <laughs> well done, mate. Keep your eyes peeled. The next great escape is an epic one. Christ. And hopefully, oh, get me makeup. I've had enough. <laughs> Look at this wrinkly old. Ha, 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 ha.